No overshoots, no ringing, yeah. And that is the waveform I wanted to get. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now and welcome to another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Well, I think it's about time to break out the old breadboard and do some electronics. So in this Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to be revisiting the mysterious world of switch mode power supplies with a design that I'm working on. Now, this is far from complete. This is a work in progress, so it doesn't have all the parts in it yet. So, got a TL494 here, which is the controller I see. Current amplifier, which is these four transistors here. Gate drive transformer. Discharge circuit for the MOSFETs. The switching MOSFETs themselves. And the half bridge. Step down transformer. Rectification. And that's basically as far as I've gotten so far. I haven't decided what I'm going to do regarding voltage regulations so far. And I haven't decided how I'm going to do the current limiting. First thing first though, I need to make sure that I've got a good gate drive transformer. And this is the circuit that I'm going to use to test it. So, I'm going to make a few gate drive transformers. I'm going to connect the gate drive transformer there. I'm going to connect the other side to the oscilloscope so I can see the waveform. And these two potentiometers here, I can adjust the frequency and duty cycle. So the way the circuit's going to work is that I've got TL494 here with its two outputs. When this output goes high, this transistor turns on and so does this one. So current will flow through the coil this way. And when this output turns on, this transistor will be on and this transistor will be on so the current will flow through the coil the other way. So we've got AC going into the coil so there's no need for a capacitor in series with the coil. So I'm going to build that circuit up now and let's see if it works. Okay so I've got the scope set up and I've got this circuit connected up to the scope so we can see the waveforms. It's got the ground connected here and the outputs where the coil is going to go is connected to oscilloscope channel 1 and 2. So let's just apply our 12 volts and see what we get. Okay, there we go. You see the two waveforms? They're looking nice and square. So let's just play around with the duty cycle, make sure that works. And indeed it does. Indeed it does. Frequency, frequency, wish my voice would stay on the same octave when I'm speaking, okay let's get that back to 50 kilohertz, yep that's close enough, so that circuit works, now when I connect the gate drive transformer, let me just do a little thing here, This waveform you can see in red. Now this is what I want to see coming out of the gate drive transformer. So we have zero volts, then we have a positive pulse, zero volts, then a negative pulse, then zero volts, then a positive pulse, and so on. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. So I'm going to connect a gate drive transformer and we'll see. Okay, so I've got an experimental gate drive transformer here that I just made. This was made from the core of a common mode filter choke and I got a couple of wires wound that around there 10 or 11 times made sure the wires are nice and tightly wound it should do the job right so let's apply the 12 volts and see what we get okay well it's looking better than I thought it would a little bit of overshoot there, but apart from that, get some nice square edges. A little bit of here and there, but um, I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Let's just adjust the duty cycle and see what happens. 
Okay, the overshoot completely disappears there. Let's put this on to full and see what we get. So, when the voltage is here or here, it's not really going to do much. Neither MOSFET will be on. When we get to this pulse here, the upper MOSFET will turn on. And this pulse here will turn the lower MOSFET on. Anyway, let's see if I can do anything about these overshoots. And we should have a pretty much perfect waveform. Okay, well I've tried it with several different cores and each one has given me pretty much the same result. So, I'm not going to say it's these that are the problem. The problem must be somewhere else. Could even be the transistors I'm using. So, I'm going to try a couple of different output topologies and we'll see what we get with those. Okay, so this is what I'm going to try now. So, the 494 is going to drive the coil directly and these two transistors here are going to provide the return path. So, let's see how well this works. Okay, well, here is that circuit all built up. But when I apply the 12 volts, we can see that waveform is completely unusable. It's totally unusable. And if you don't believe me that I'm getting the same waveform with each coil, even with this huge ass coil I've got here with tons and tons of inductance still get the same unusable waveform and finally I want to try this circuit now although this requires a center tapped transformer and I don't have any of those what I could do is take this one here which has three windings on it connect two of the windings together in series and where the two windings connect together I'm going to use that as my center point so let's say I take the blue wire and the orange wire connect those together and there's my center tap okay so the circuit is built up now and this coil appears to be picking up something as you can see on the scope there so I'm not even sure what's going to happen when I connect up the power. I'm going to turn the duty cycle right down. Connect up the 12 volts. Let's just see if we can even get a waveform. Yeah, I don't really think this is going to be a very usable circuit. Okay, so we're back to this circuit now. Except Instead of using four transistors, I'm using a couple of gate driver ICs. And yes, I've been scrounging around my parts box looking for those particular ICs. So these are MIC4452 gate driver ICs. Now let's just apply our 12 volts. And as you can see, we get a nice output out of channel A and a nice output out of channel B. You can see a little bit of, yeah, there on channel B, but, uh, yeah, that's just because of the way the scope's connected. If I reverse these connections, you can see it still looks the same. So, yeah, that's the scope connection, not my circuit. Question is, are we going to get a much better waveform out of our coil? Question is... Are we going to get a much better waveform out of our transformer? Let's see. Wow. Look at that. That is perfect. Absolutely perfect. No overshoots. No ringing. Yeah. And that is the waveform I wanted to get. So this is where we started with, and this is where we are now. So just by swapping those four transistors out for two gate driver ICs, it completely cleaned up that waveform, and I think we're ready to move on to the next stage. But anyway, this video is getting pretty long, I've got over 30 minutes of waffle to edit, so yeah, I'm going to get on with that, and until next time, goodbye.